And you no sooner flop yourself into bed when someone flops you out of it again. Thunder always gives somebody a stomachache. Take my advice, Matthew. Don't ever be a doctor. Well, Gretz, what's the trouble? It's Mrs. Sebastian, her alert. Mrs. Sebastian? Boy, that seems impossible. She I don't know anything about it. Only Dr. Sebastian said to get you over as soon as I could. Yes. Yes. All right, Gretz. I won't be long. Sebastian, I can't understand this sudden relapse. I thought Ida was out of danger, but I'll go up and have a look. It's too late, Doctor. Ida's dead. Good heavens. Dead? Well, I, I can't believe it. She died a few minutes after Gretz had gone for you. Her heart was to fail. I'm afraid so. Did, did she know it was the end? No. She died in her sleep. Poor Ida. She had such faith in me. Said she knew I wouldn't let her die. We did all we could for her, Doctor. You've nothing to reproach yourself about. Poor child. She was always a child to me. I brought her into the world, you know. She's in another world now, Doctor. A better world, I hope. She never got much out of this one. Always seemed to give it more than she received. She was a very good woman. A sort of spiritual Cinderella who dreamed of a Prince Charming. She did find her prince, though. Thank you, Doctor. You must be very tired. Rest, do you think you can get Dr. Downer back home? Mm-hmm. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Sebastian. I'm so sorry. Thank you. to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord and the Spirit of the Lord upon thee. Amen. Amen. Have you any plans for the future, Doctor? Yes, I'm thinking of returning to my first love, Sir Cadre. I prefer it to general practice. I'm afraid that Midbury doesn't offer much of a field for a psychiatrist. No. Anyway, I'm anxious to leave. 
And there are too many memories here. Is that what you were so eager to talk to me about? No. It was about Ida. Well? In 40 years' practice, I never saw pneumonia act like that. Like what? Well, two days after I gave her that sulfur pyridine treatment, her temperature was nearly normal. She should have recovered. Dr. Donner, you've made similar insinuations a number of times. I don't know why. After all, you were attending Ida. And I'd prefer to believe that you understood her case. And have done all you could to save her. I'm afraid I haven't made myself quite clear. Thinking back, she seemed to have some premonition of what was going to happen. You're overwrought, Doctor. Better snap out of it. Well, here we are. One physician might prescribe for another. I'd fix myself a good hot toddy and get an early night. Thank you. No, Winnie. I don't like George Sebastian. I don't like the way he acted or the way he talked to me. There's something uh, twisted in him. Something cold and hidden. Hidden? Yes. A strange man. Full of secrets. I didn't like him when he came to town and started court Ida. I know it was for our money. But he was always so nice to Ida. Exactly. And see what happened. And sure what happened besides her catching cold like everybody does. What happened, Doctor? Whatever you're thinking of. I don't know. Something. Winnie, do you think I'm getting feeble-minded? Well, sometimes I'm after thinking that... Oh, sure, no, Doctor. You're all right. I could kick myself for signing that death certificate. Why did I do it, Winnie? She died too quickly. Why didn't I go in that house and see for myself? Why didn't I ask for an autopsy? An autopsy? You don't think that Dr. Sebastian... Oh, no, you couldn't. Why, he... He has such wonderful eyes, he has. Maybe I let those eyes hypnotize me. Maybe it's not too late. I could get the coroner on the phone. The coroner? I'll... I'll get him for you. Poor Ida. She loved him so. Maybe she wouldn't like me stirring up a scandal about the man she loved. Giving people a chance to talk. Hello, operator. Operator, get me Dr. Hatch, please. Quickly. Wait a minute, Winnie. Perhaps we'd better let her keep her romance. At least until I have something more to go on, beside the wind and the rain. Like the farmer, is. What do you think he is up to? You mean our family physician? Yes. Age seems to have made him a trifle clairvoyant. Yes. But he could be dangerous. Ah. He's just a tired old man. Get yourself a drink. You should learn to bear the mark of Cain more gracefully, Maurice. I know that funerals can be quite a strain. This is the last one we shall attend for some time now. We can relax. I'm not too sure, George. Don't be a fool, Maurice. The way to defeat Dr. Downer is by clever thinking. The bullet is more effective. And much more easily traced. You should know that, Maurice. Or have you forgotten the death sentence they gave us in Vienna? No. My brains again served as well in Savannah, didn't they? Yes, but we didn't leave any loose ends lying about there. Nor shall we here. If you leave everything to me. All right. But I just as soon lay down her away. 
And maybe you wouldn't have to think so much. Ah. These atrocious paintings. And this absurd wallpaper. These pathetic antiques. We all breathe her spirit. I can almost see her now coming down those stairs. That foolish smile. And the love light in her eyes. She's dead. Isn't it enough? No. I can never forgive her the eight months spent in this cave of romance. Well? And do we get out of here? Oh. We'll take a month to wind up the estate. And we'll stay another month out of simple propriety. And after that, if we are still free? After that, Maurice? New York. I shall hang out my sign and amuse myself with the fourth. A most pleasant incarnation of Dr. George Sebastian. <laughs> See me, Mr. Watkins? Yes, Gil, I want to tell you something, but I can't remember what it was. It's about that Sunday feature. No, 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 it wasn't that. I, I have a note here somewhere. It says, see Gil Sawyer. Now I can't find the note. What's that noise? Telephone, Mr. Watkins. Oh. Don't be so impatient. I got it. You want to give me that raise you promised? No, it couldn't have been that. I could only remember what I forgot. Hello. Hello, Lauren. Hello? Oh, it's you, darling. Have I forgotten what? Why, darling, you know I never forget anything. Just a moment, darling. Listen, dar er, Gil, I promised my wife that you... Here it is now. That you cover a bazaar for crippled children on the roof of the Avenue Club this afternoon. You don't expect anything to happen there, do you? Nothing will happen if you go, but if you don't... Besides, Linda will be there. Oh. Well, of course I'll go. Hello, darling. Gil will cover it for you. Uh, where are you now? I'm in Dr. Sebastian's office. Dr. Sebastian, the famous psychiatrist. What does he say about Linda? Well, I haven't had time to outline her case yet. I, I've been telling the doctor about my dreams. Yes, I will. I'll tell him all about her. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Oh, doctor. Yes? Before I take you into the very heart of my dreams, I want to speak to you about my sister, Linda Booth. She's adorable. Yes. But she's a mass of complexes, a veritable psychic swamp. Oh, uh, what seems to be troubling her? Well, that's what I want you to find out. She gets very low over nothing at all. And when she broods, it worries me to distraction. Uh, has she any serious worries? None at all. She has her own private fortune. Oh. A very nice young man is in love with her and... Well, there you are. Could I bring her in tomorrow? I prefer you didn't. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm not interested, but I found that the effect of a doctor's office on a neurotic mind is sometimes detrimental. But if you don't see her, how can you treat her? I want to see her, but I'd rather have the opportunity of observing her without her knowing that I'm doing so uh, professionally. Oh, I see. Very clever. Now then, let us think. The bazaar. The bazaar? That's it. I'll put her in charge of the Wheel of Fortune. Oh, Doctor, it's going to be so exciting. You must come. You'll just love my costume. Yes, I'm sure I will. <laughs> I'm just trying to see it. Thank you. This is my fifth spin, Linda. If that wheel doesn't tell me about Bob this time, I'm off of it. Number 16. What can that wheel tell you about Bob that you don't already know? Soon take an important airplane trip with your sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> and we're taking off right now. What bunk. <laughs> bunk is right. How can you expect to do business with such commercial candor? Gil, what on earth brings you here? Officially, the voice of New York, Madam Watkins. Unofficially, you. Thanks. Thank you. For what? That smile, it's the first I've seen in weeks. What's the matter, Linda? I don't know, Gil. You haven't been yourself lately. What's wrong? Maybe I have been myself lately. Maybe that's what's wrong. That doesn't make much sense. No, 
my cousin. Frankly, girl, I've been feeling awfully low. I don't know why. That's how I let Louise talk me into helping out here. I thought being around a lot of people, I might snap out of it. You might be around a lot of people, but you're certainly not part of them. Gil, please. Let's not have the two of us worry. That's the trouble, Linda. You can't always be alone like a somnambulist. You ought to be willing to share your thoughts instead of walking around in a dream. <laughs> in a very bad dream. Right over here, Doctor. Uh, Linda, Linda, this is Dr. Sebastian, an old friend from Europe. How do you do? It was quite a feat to get him to the bazaar. But he's not here professionally. And uh, this is Mr. Gill Sawyer. He is here professionally. He's writing up the bazaar for my husband's newspaper. Uh, Gill, uh, Gil, uh, there's something frightfully important I want you to write about. It's about the, um, let me see, uh, about the doll exhibit. I don't like dolls. I never did for you. Of course not, silly. I merely wanted to give Dr. Sebastian a chance to observe Linda alone. What for? So that he can help her. He's a psycho, uh, A psychiatrist? Uh, yes. Did Linda ask you to bring him to her? Certainly not, but that's one of the things I adore most, bringing the right people together. I think you're making a big mistake, Mrs. Watkins. Linda doesn't need psychoanalyzing. Besides, I know something about that racket. New York's full of phony mind-reading quacks. But he's not a quack. He's a marvelous man. In fact, I'm told he's one of the most brilliant minds of the ages. What about Socrates? Socrates? Well, if Dr. Sebastian doesn't work out, we'll try him. Oh, there's a... Oh! 21. I'll be leaving you in a few minutes, Linda. A large inheritance will soon be yours. Inheritance? Oh, Uncle Henry must have died. Let's go tell my husband. Strange how people take this thing so seriously, isn't it? And I look these wheels and we psychiatrists will be out of business. Don't tell me you're putting yourself in a class with fortune tellers. <laughs> That's what most people try to use us for. I think I shall have to install one of these things in my office. Wouldn't it be wonderful if things were as easy to solve as that? One little spin and we could have an answer to everything. Would we want the answer to everything? More to the point. Is there one? I think so. Your work must be very absorbing. Exploring into the depths of strange souls. Most of them are not very strange. You'd be surprised if you knew how much alike they all are, for the most part. It's rare that one finds a really interesting subject. Well, has Dr. Sebastian fallen for your little racket, Linda? No. He's just acting as a come on for gullible prospects. I wonder if Mr. Sawyer might relieve me. I really should be getting back to my office. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. It'd be a pleasure. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer. Thank you, Miss Booth. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Well, I wonder where your sister found him. I don't know. But I found him most interesting. I imagine women would. Kill, I think you're jealous. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm thirsty. Come on, have a drink with me. Suits me. Thank you. Look, you know what all those people are doing down there? Every one of them is waiting for the Chronicle to come out to read my story about the bazaar. Are doing something else just as foolish. I'll have you know what I write for the Chronicle isn't foolish. Your brother-in-law proved that by promising me two raises in the past six months. Are you proud of me? Are you proud of me? You're doing all right for yourself. You mean I'm doing all right for ourselves? You haven't forgotten, have you, that I promised to make good on the job if you promised you. To... I want to be fair to you. If I married you, I'd probably cause you great unhappiness. Unhappiness? In heaven? It wouldn't be heaven. But a hospital in which an invalid sat and stared at you. 
Linda, I thought everything was all set. Before long, we'd... Say, I don't think you're even listening to me. What's the matter, Tommy? Your eyes look sad as though they were remembering something. Gil. Hadn't you better phone your story to the newspaper? She was standing on top of the parapet. What's wrong? What happened? Let me see, please. What is it? She tried to jump off the roof. She did. Oh, Linda, dear, how could you ever do such a thing? I'm not talking about it here, Mrs. Watkins. Call your car and we'll take her home. All right, enough. I'll telephone Dr. Sebastian. As you lie there now, so calm and quiet, are you aware of your other self? Yes. Tell me what you remember. Give me your hand while you talk. I've tried to die often. I don't know why. It's as if I were really dead and only alone to life. Someone keeps coming and reminding me. You want to live, don't you? Yes. But every morning when I wake, I wonder if I'm going to find myself standing there again before night. Standing where? At the edge of a grave, looking down. When you stand there at the edge, you become afraid? Of what? Nothing, clearly. Like a noise far away. Coming too swiftly. I close my eyes before I hear it. Then it's like falling into an ugly sleep. Like being pulled into a dark room to be to be killed? Yes. Have you ever seen the one who pulls you? No. You're tired. You must try and get some sleep. That's right. Oh, Doctor! Doctor, how is she? Will she be all right? I think so. How do you diagnose her case? Miss Booth is undoubtedly suffering from nervous shock. This condition causes her subconscious mind to whisper evil thoughts to her. And you've arrived at that conclusion after a careful psychoanalysis of her soul, eh, Doctor? Yes, Mr. Sawyer. Uh, 
what treatment would you prescribe, Doctor? Rest and quiet, no excitement. And above all, no visitors. Does she have any medicine? No medicine. And you think you'll eventually be able to help her overcome this subconscious... Uh, whatchamacallit? Miss Wooth has agreed to place herself entirely in my hands. You need have no further worries. Good night. I'd still like to know who he is. Where are his credentials? Genius carries its own credentials, Mr. Sawyer. Miss Booth is asleep now. I shouldn't let her be disturbed if I were you. Very well, Doctor. Thank you so much, and good night. Good night. If Dr. Sebastian can help Linda and put a stop to her ridiculous desire to jump off buildings, I would certainly approve him attending her. I don't approve of Linda's handing over the entire delicate mechanism of her mind and emotions to a man she doesn't even know, to a half-baked soul meddler. I wish you'd think of phrases like that when you're writing for our newspaper. Don't worry, I will. I'm going to write an expose of phony psychiatrists, and I'll prove that usually the patient is helping the insanity of the doctor, coddling his delusions of superiority, and that nine times out of ten, the patient loses his own soul in the process. Good night. You're not going to put that in the Chronicle. All right, I'll put it in the Star. Well... Bless his heart. I wish I'd have given him that raise. Hello. Maurice? How would you like to be very rich? Very rich? I'd prefer it to sitting like a stuffed goose in your office. It can be done. We will ride like Fortunatus in a coach of gold. Now what? Very strange and disturbing. As if there were a pattern to one's life, a rhythm to one's destiny. Well, what's certain? We come back on the main road, Maurice, suddenly and without search. And we ride on. We ride on? Where? It would be so simple, so easy. Of course, it would entail another wedding. Oh. So that's it. I met her today, Maurice. And who is the lucky one? Her name's Linda Booth. Linda Booth, hmm. That's very pretty. Yes, I've accepted her as a patient. Very interesting illness. A suicide complex. <laughs> Does that amuse you? Amuse me? <laughs> Makes me extraordinarily happy. <laughs> I thought it would. And if I married her and she died? He'd be rich, innocent, and respectable. <laughs> exactly. Ecuador is just there, between Colombia and Peru. It appears to have been the favorite spot of the creator of this strange world. For he's blessed it with peace, beauty, sunshine, and all the other exquisite things of life. And all free. It sounds like paradise. It is paradise. Oh, dear, I didn't realize how fast the time is slipping. I'm afraid I must go. I'm sorry if I've kept you. But when anyone starts me traveling on my revolving globe, I forget time and space. I hope you haven't forgotten Louise's dinner tonight. I never forget engagements I want to keep. I'll see you to the other then. You really needn't have bothered, you know. I'm fairly safe in my own hands now. Thanks to you. Do you recall at our first meeting my telling you that most of my patients fell into one category or another? Yes, I do. Well, you're one of the exceptions. More difficult. No, no, no. More interesting. Helping you makes me feel that I've accomplished something really worthwhile. Right now. Oh. See you at eight tonight. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. I suppose I should say, fancy meeting you here. Fancy meeting you anywhere. The Earth seems to have swallowed you these last two months. Yeah, I've, I've been very busy. Hmm. I've been reading some of your work. I don't suppose you, you like what I write, do you? It's not very complimentary. It's not meant to be, but it's true. Same floor. Uh, Linda, you must let me talk to you. Now, there's nothing good or sensible that Sebastian can do for you. That's for me to judge. But don't you realize he's asking you to change your character? And you're paying him to do it. Gil, you're talking like an now, idiot. Now, wait a minute. I've got a lot more to tell you. I haven't the time to hear it. Now, Linda, 
Why should you and I fall out over a phony psychiatrist? Because you're wrong. Because I like him. Because he's helping me. Helping you? Yes. You're no different than you were before. Linda, if I knew he was helping you, I'd, I'd hope and pray that everything I've written would be disproved. I'd even carry shark's teeth to help. But he's not. There's something weird and wrong with that, Sebastian. You're the one that's wrong, Gil. You should be encouraging him instead of starting this, this one-man campaign of mudsling in your newspaper. Well, Linda, why not give me a chance to help you? As I told you before, there's nothing wrong with you that common sense can't cure. <laughs> You're just an ordinary hypochondriac. Thanks. Why don't you get out and lose yourself and enjoy life like everybody else does? I'm sorry, Gil. I haven't the time. Goodbye. Well, let's not break off like this. Come on over and have a drink with me. No, Gil, now, I Now, don't be you... obstinate. That's another one of the things that's wrong with you. Two chocolate ice cream sodas. I have this with you on one condition. And that is? That you talk about anything but Dr. Sebastian. All right, we'll talk about Dr. Sawyer. Very well, Doctor. And what do you prescribe? Well, good old Doc Sawyer is going to give you his full, complete one-day treatment. If you're not better at the end of it, he'll return you to your doctor, to your psychiatrist. And how do we begin? We begin with this medicine. And after that, we get on a subway train for Coney Island. Coney Island? Oh, not me. <laughs> Speed that man. <laughs> now! Telephoning me like this in my own home. Hello, this is Mrs. Watkins. What is it you want, please? Yeah, my sister. Oh, oh yes, that's right. I did call you about her, didn't I? Uh, have you found her yet? Oh, well, all I know is that my sister's been gone for hours, and I thought if you put in a riot call. Well, my goodness, there certainly ought to be some way of finding her with all the men you have on the force. Give me that telephone. Hello, this is Mr. Watkins. Yes, I see. I understand. Thank you very much. Go on, tell me the worst. There's nothing to tell. They've checked everywhere, and no news certainly ought to be good news. Well, nothing's happened to Linda. Dr. Sebastian. Oh, uh, good evening, good Doctor. Evening. Good evening, Doctor. I'm sorry I'm so late. Oh, that's quite all right. As a matter of fact, I'm pleased you are. Linda has been held up a trifle. A trifle? We haven't heard from her for hours, and I'm worried to... Distraction. Distraction? Do sit down, Doctor. You needn't worry, Mrs. Watkins. I'm quite sure that Linda's capable of taking care of herself. <laughs> Why, Linda, where have you been? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I didn't realize the time. It was terribly rude. I, I should have at least phoned. Don't worry, please. It's all my fault. What do you mean, your fault? Anyway, why all the apologies? Just because we had a little fun? <laughs> you should have seen her on the merry-go-round, an ice cream cone on one hand and trying to grab the gold ring with the other. And she got it. <laughs> Come, dear, I think we'd better go put your dress on. I won't be long. Don't go away, Gil. Won't you stay for dinner, Gil? Well, uh, hardly presentable. Oh, what's the difference? I'm sure Dr. Sebastian won't mind. Not at all. In fact, I'd rather enjoy the company of a man who writes such interesting articles, whose profound insight into an alien field is nothing short of remarkable. Yes, my editor thinks it's remarkable, the way the star's circulation is going up. Anything that increases the circulation of the star is remarkable. I've been wondering, Mr. Sawyer, where you gather your astounding information? Oh, from various sources. Interviews with reputable physicians, victims of quacks, numerous medical files, from Savannah? Savannah? Yes. One of our leading psychiatrists was once married in Savannah. Psychiatrists do get married, you know. Even in Savannah. 
But this one graduated from Berlin University in 1912. That would make him a man almost 50, much older than you. Well, perhaps he graduated very young. It might be that he was unusually bright, even precocious. Undoubtedly. You know, Mr. Sawyer, I find you very stimulating and rather amusing. Indeed. Although I don't know why you should concern yourself so much about me. That should be fairly easy to comprehend, even for a psychiatrist. Really? Really. You've hoodwinked Linda into believing that you're an idol, a master mind. You're using your science unethically, kicking her soul around like a football. You've got her believing in you, trusting in you. When, as a matter of fact, almost every word you tell her is a lie. Gil. I'm sorry, Linda. Apologies should be to Dr. Sebastian. An apology, not at all. As a matter of fact, he's quite right. I have lied to you. As your physician, it has been my privilege to tell you many lies. All of them pleasant, I hope. And I assure you, most necessary for your recovery. Very clever, Dr. Sebastian. Mr. Sawyer, I've listened to you patiently, and now... Now you want to tell me that I'm a bad loser. That I'm behaving like a blackmailer. All of which doesn't interest me. Nor does it change my opinion that you're an imposter who's trying to wreck Linda's life. Gil! It's all right. There are some things Mr. Sawyer must learn. Even from a psychiatrist. Come, Linda. Well, cocktails. Ladies, doctor? Uh, no, thank you. Not just at this moment. You will recall two months ago in this room, I told you that Linda had been suffering from nervous shock, that her subconscious mind whispered evil thoughts to her. Since that time, I've been exploring her mind, endeavoring to isolate her murderer, that she may be released from the grip of her mania. I have reason to believe that I've done this. I must ask you all to sit down and remain silent and watch the imposter at work. Just here, my dear. Absolute faith in me. Yes. Look at me. Let's go back to that day on the roof of the bazaar. What was on your mind that day, Linda? Think. Think. A picture of a garden. Long ago. You were a little girl? Yes. It was your garden, your home? Yes. It was night. My father was there. Yes. Go on. He said he was going away for a long time. He kissed me goodbye and asked me to forgive him. Then? I begged him not to leave me. To take me with him, but... What happened then? He started to go and I ran after him and stopped him. He turned me back and closed the gate between us. Then he kissed me again and disappeared into the darkness. And what did you do? I was frightened. I called to him. Then out of the darkness I heard his voice calling. Goodbye, Linda, my child. 
try to forgive me, try to forget. Then? There was a noise. Someone screamed, you mean? No. It was a shot. I ran out and found him. Dead. What did you say? I shouted, Father, don't go without me. No. Is what Lindra said the truth? Yes. But I never thought she knew. We've never told her. But someone should have told me. Perhaps so, but one doesn't talk about such things, Doctor. At any rate, I'm glad to know the cause of Linda's trouble. Knowing the cause makes the cure fairly simple. Linda, my dear, remember this always. That little girl in your mind is your murderer. She leads you out to the garden gates to death to fulfill the wish you made. You must close your ears to the hidden voice that drives you to join your father. You promise me that. Good night. Take it to Savannah, please. Georgia? Yes. Twenty-five twenty, please. Well, I'd like a lower, too. George, I could be an East professor. I studied in Vienna. Studied dancing? Medicine and dancing. Mostly dancing. George, why did you bring me to this roof garden? No, thank you. Perhaps it was because I met you here at the bazaar. Perhaps. Or was it to test my, my sanity? No. There's no such thing as sanity. At best, it's a heroic and precarious little hiding place in which we try to conceal ourselves from the devils. Devils? Mm -hmm. The devils of time, space. Things unknown in the past. Is that why you told me you preferred the uncertainty of the future? Life would be almost intolerable if we knew our future steps in advance, don't you think? And life would be more hopeful if we could forget our footsteps of the past. I know. Sometimes out of the unknown rivers and mountains of the mind, strange sounds come into our hearts. We become disturbed. We develop neuroses, phobias, manias. We try writing, painting, music or even evil as a relief. Evil? Mm -hmm. George, have you had other patients like me? Not like you. Ever. But I know a man. Yes. His case might be styled something like yours. Oh, no. No, no, not like you. Please tell me. Would you really like to know? Yes. All right, then, come along.
Well, he was born in Europe. His parents were cultured aristocrats. They gave him every advantage, home, money, education, finally a profession. He was very successful. When he married the woman he loved, he thought his world complete. Then suddenly, out of the blue, his world collapsed. How? You know, it's the same old story. An unfaithful wife and his best friend. I see. He suffered a shock that no words can describe. Turned his brain upside down, he killed them both. Then he became obsessed with an unconquerable phobia. His wife became the personification of all womankind. And he swore to kill every woman who promised her love. How dreadful. And yet, I can sympathize with such a soul. What happened to him? His case seemed almost hopeless. But recently, his bitterness and hate have been dissolved. Now, once again, he wants to be the man he was born. He wants to live. And so do I. What do you see? Entrancing lights. Like the stars upside down. Like a parasol of stars in Ecuador. I know. The place you call paradise. Yes. You're not afraid anymore. Not when you're with me. Not even of me? Not at all. It seems nothing wrong could happen to me. Ever. Nothing wrong can happen to you ever. Linda, darling. Because I love you. Yes, sir. My name's Gil Sawyer. Huh? Not that Gil Sawyer from the New York Star. Yes. Don't tell me I have readers in Medbury. You have one, anyhow. Come in, sir. Thank you. This is Winnie, my housekeeper. How do you do? How do you do? Sure, he never misses a word you write. Winnie. He... Uh, you'll have tea. Yes, doctor. Sit down, sir. Please don't think, Dr. Donner, that I have my literary axe out for all medicos. I'm only after the quack. Oh, I understand. But whatever brings you to Medbury? Savannah. Savannah? Savannah brought me to Midbury. I'm hoping Midbury will take me back to New York. To a certain Dr. George Sebastian. Dr. Sebastian? Do you know him? Oh, I, I knew Dr. Sebastian quite well. But I don't understand your reference to Savannah. Well, simply that he practiced there once. Is that so? And when did he leave there? Oh, several years ago. He gave up his practice when his wife died. He was married in Savannah and his wife died? Yes. Pneumonia took her, I think. Is that so? And why are you so interested in Dr. Sebastian, Mr. Sawyer? Well, I'd like to name him definitely in some of my articles. I'm checking up on some suspicions I have. What suspicions? Well, I'd rather let it go at that until I'm more sure of my ground. I see. Oh, sit over here, Mr. Sawyer. Thank you. Can you tell me anything about Dr. Sebastian? Oh, not very much. You see, he didn't even practice here. Altogether wasn't here more than a year. And he kept pretty much to himself. Ida's the only one that ever really knew him. Ida? His wife. When she died, he broke up stakes and went to New York. Well, he's quite a merry widower, isn't he? What happened to the second Mrs. Sebastian? Oh, she died of pneumonia, too. Indeed. 
Oh, uh, well, there's uh, nothing, uh, nothing unusual about people dying of pneumonia in these parts. I attended her, did all I could. When did Dr. Sebastian leave here? Oh, about six months ago. Did you notice anything strange or weird about him? Anyone who lives in Midbury becomes strange and weird, Mr. Sawyer. I see. Well, I won't trouble you anymore, Doctor. Thanks very much for your information. And your very nice tea, miss. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you any more. And you've helped a lot. If ever I can be of any assistance to you, you'll find me here. Thank you, and I'll be looking forward to more of your articles. Thank you, Doctor. Good day. Good day. Bless me soul, I'm beginning to think there is something wrong with you. Here you've been worrying your head off about Dr. Sebastian, and when a chance comes for you to say something or do something, you shut up tighter than an Irish clam. Clam? I never saw that fellow before. Maybe he's not Mr. Sawyer. I don't want to discuss either with a stranger. But surely you're going to do something now. Yes, get the coroner on the phone. Ah. Hi, George. Hello, coffee. Uh -huh. You seem unusually happy this evening, George. I am. Why? Uh, w w here, here, I'll show you. A congratulations in order? Yeah, I'll thank you, Maurice. And when is the wedding? Uh, Monday a week. What's that? Quito. Quito? Mm hmm. Quito, the capital of Ecuador. A dream city. That's where we're going to live. We are? Oh, no, 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 not you, Maurice. You're too material for the Society of Elves. Oh. So you're going to turn elf and top off to Quito. That's very pretty. Yes, very pretty. It's a little mountain city perched above a jungle. If you stand on tiptoe, you can almost touch the sky. The night opens a parasol of stars over your head. It does, huh? <laughs> oh, dear, life's so extremely simple in Quito, Maurice. Even the headhunters smile at you on the promenades. And you, Mary Linda, your picture will be in every paper in the country. Mm -hmm. And the headhunters of Vienna, Midbury, and Savannah will be very glad to see it. Bah! I'm not concerned with those bucolic centers of interest. What I want to know is, can a man change his destiny? Can Lucifer climb back into heaven on his knees with tears in his eyes and his heart whispering the Magnificat? Are you trying to tell me that you're actually in love with this girl? Yes, Maurice, I am. Once again, I'm human, sad, weak, full of longings. Once again, I'm going to live. Once again, I'm the man I was born. And what about me? Hmm? We're out of tune, Maurice, you and I. Are we? Why? Why? Has there never crept into that aboriginal skull of yours a slight wonder as to why anyone so brilliant, so superior as I should have gone through life like some, some medieval monster? You are a monster, Sebastian. Spawned in the dark of the moon and no breath of God in your soul. That's not true anymore. It's not true. For love is breathing the breath of God into my soul. And driving the common sense out of your mind. Have you forgotten that we are going to ride like Fortunatus in that coach of gold? Maurice? I'm marrying Linda. And I'm going away with her. To be enshrined in a valentine, instead of a robes gallery. Valentine. <laughs> valentine of blood. What? Read. What's that? What do you think Downer's up to? An autopsy. Autopsy? So that tired old man comes stumbling after us, George. They're not moving him for a couple of days. It's strange. Strange that this should happen to me now. I'd almost forgotten Midbury. I'd almost forgotten everything. I hadn't forgotten Downer. Maurice, you've got to go to Midbury. Me, what for? You've got to get at that grave first. So, we are back in tune again. Eh, hey, George? Maurice, you must do this. You've never failed me. I have never failed you because you were my brains. But you aren't anymore. 
You're like all the other clever ones. Clever until they meet a woman. And then they suddenly become fools and the law gets them. Standing still with a faraway look in their eyes. Maurice, if you'll go to Midbury, I'll listen to you. I'll do anything you say. Anything? Anything. Uh, that's better, George. All right, I'll go. But when I come back, we'll stick to our original plans. Mm -hmm. And forget all about Quito and Ecuador and the Valentines. Yes, Maurice, we'll forget about everything but our plans. Now, come along. Go quickly. Just have a car, block and tackle anything you want. Here. Here's some money. Don't make any mistakes. Very well. Hello? George, I didn't expect to hear from you again tonight. What? If we're married and sail tomorrow, we can be in Quito in a fortnight. Well, I don't know what Louise and Lawrence will say, but I know what I'm going to say. It's... yes. What's the idea? Come up out of there. Almost impossible to believe, Dr. Hatch. That's what I said when I first got the report. But there it was. And I saw it with my own eyes. The grave had been dug up and the casket taken away. Nothing there but the body of the night watchman. Poor Ida. They wouldn't let her rest, even in her own grave. Well, we won't rest till we find out who did it. That's right. 
All aboard! Decorated for the christening, a wedding. The bridegroom must be a dressmaker. Ah, uh, he's a doctor, but he didn't do the decorating. His sister-in-law did. She's a little funny. Hey, hey, sister? Yeah. I was wedding. I dreamed of it all. Oh, the ceremony was so short. I didn't even have time for a good try. Oh, I think it's thrilling. Into a wedding ring and onto a boat. Hardly before I can get my breath. I'm afraid I have rather rushed you. Glad you did. Makes a better story. Congratulations, sir. Oh, thank you. Are you coming with us, Mrs. Watkins? Certainly. You may call me Louise now, George. Louise, come with me, darling. I want you to help me pick out the, you know, for. Uh... Oh yes, yes. Anything you say. Hey, Lawrence. Well, goodbye, dear. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Louise, dear. Oh, dear, isn't it exciting? Louise, let the boys get their picture. Picture? Oh, certainly. If you don't stop posing and talking and kissing, they'll never get anywhere. I was only trying to help. <laughs> goodbye. 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 Oh, doctors, just one more, please. Thank you. Congratulations, mister. Oh, thank you. Want a paper? Certainly. You'll want to read all about the murder. Here, you can keep the paper. Thanks, mister. And the best of luck to you and the missus. Well, I read all about the cemetery murder. Well, I read all about it. Darling, I'm so glad they didn't come along. I just want to be with you, alone. Hey, hey, oh, my dear. Mrs. Stewart, Sebastian. Doesn't that sound wonderful? What? Doesn't Mrs. George Sebastian sound thrilling? Thrilling, my love. It's like a dream, isn't it, my dear? Like entering a brighter kind of existence. We found a new day, George. And it will never end. Darling, what is it? You look worried. You stupid of me. I've forgotten our passports and tickets. I must have left them at my apartment. It'll only take a moment. Don't worry. Henry. Yes, sir. Drive to my apartment quickly. Very good, sir. I won't be a moment, darling. Just park along there, please. Are you here? Yes. What happened? I, um... I had a little trouble. Yes, that trouble is all over the front page of every newspaper. Why did you have to murder the watchman? What did you expect me to do? Confide in him? You could have run away. You could have hidden. You could have done something. Stop shouting. I did the only thing I could do. Except leave Ida's body in the grave. To be exhumed. But they found out! Be quiet and prepare yourself for another shock. You might as well know all the bad news. Well, what is it? A family physician came to New York on the train with me. Dr. Donner? Yes. And the coroner took him to the Midbury station. Where is he now? At the Empress Hotel. I followed him. He didn't see you? No, I don't make stupid mistakes. Oh, was a tie. Maurice. Maurice. He's after only one thing. You realize that, don't you? It's your fault. You shouldn't have stopped me the day of the funeral. Well, you've got to get him now. Not me. Maurice, I saved your life once, don't you remember? Yes. And I paid you back last night in a graveyard. But Donner will go after the police. Look at you. Look at my brainy professor. Who is afraid now? Yes. Yes, Maurice, I am afraid. It's not in me anymore. It's gone, it's past. And let's get out of here. Downer has no evidence yet. But he'll get it. He started now and he'll never stop. He'll find out who Dr. Sebastian really is. He's come after us, Maurice. We've got to find him before he finds us. George, I'll go with you. But that's all. 
The job is yours this time. But Maurice, I can't do it, you know I... All right, then. Come on. Oh, come on. Get a taxi, quickly. Now, Linda, dear, Gretchen tells me that one of my patients had a serious relapse. I must go to her. We'll miss the boat. No, darling, I won't be long. Now, you go home and wait for me, please. George. No, I'm sorry, dear. Empress Hotel. Yes, ma'am. I'll send it right up. 3.35. Oh, is the public library near here? Yes, Dr. Downer, at 42nd and 5th. The doorman will direct you. Oh, thank you very much. Room clerk. Yes, I'll tend to it right away. I'm Dr. Downer from Midbury, and I'd like to do a little research work. Well, what sort of research work, Dr. Downer? Well, I'd like to look up somebody, a certain doctor who went to medical school in Vienna about 20 years ago. Well, our medical school yearbooks are in room 32 on the second floor. The stairway is right around the corner. Oh, thank you very much. Is there a Dr. Downer from Midbury registered here? Why, yes, but he's not in at the moment. Oh, what a shame. I missed him at the station, too. Stupid of me. Would you care to leave a message? Uh, Dr. Downer's a very old gentleman. He hasn't been in New York before. I'm rather worried about him. Uh, did he leave any word as to where he might be going? Well, as a matter of fact, he inquired about the public library. The public library? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. I'll call in again later. Here you are, Doctor. These cover all the Vienna medical schools for the ten years ending 1927. Oh. Oh, thank you, thank you. Wait, please. Did you find what you wanted? Yes, thank you. I, I don't suppose you have news files. I, I mean, uh, catalogued newspaper clippings. Uh, we have files of papers, but nothing catalogued. You might try the newspaper offices. The newspaper? Oh, oh, yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know. New York Star, Sawyer's desk. Hello, Mr. Sawyer? No, this is Mickey Barnes, Mr. Sawyer's assistant. He's not in right now, but I'm taking all of his messages. Well, do you think you could arrange for me to have access to your catalog newspaper clippings? I'm a friend of Mr. Sawyer's. Sure. 
your friend of Gail's. I'll get you an okay. Oh, thank you very much. I shall be right over. And may I help you? Oh, yes, perhaps you can. I'm looking for a little uh, gray-haired old gentleman. I believe he came in here to look up some medical school books. I think I know who you mean. He was looking at those reference books. He left a few moments ago. Oh, thank you. Pardon me, I'd like to go to the New York Star at this address. Sorry, mister, I'm busy. That cab will take you. Oh, thank you very much. Searching the place for you. He just left in a taxi, New York Star office. Is it Dr. Frederick L A N G A M A W N? Langerman. That's it. That's the one. Here you are, Doc. That's a pretty fat file. You'll probably find all you want there. Thank you very much. Be back in a minute, Doc. Frederick Langman went to on us. Frederick Langman makes sensational discoveries. Frederick Langman weds. Frederick Langman escapes from prison. Convicted of double murder. Oh, son! Find what you wanted, Doc? When do you think Mr. Sawyer will be in? Well, I'm uh, not expecting him back at all, Doc. And if I were in his shoes, I'd be out getting pie-eyed. I don't understand. Well, if my best girl went off and married another guy, I'd bury myself in alcohol. That's her. Pretty bright, eh, Doc? Dr. Sebastian. Well, the groom's not a bad-looking guy, either. How can I get in touch with Mr. Sebastian? Do you know? Well, I... I know the number Mr. Sawyer used to call. Well, get it for me quickly, will you please? Well, do you think it'd be all right, yes, Doc? Yes, it's quite all right. It's quite all right. If I get fired for this, you better be finding me a job up there in Midbury. Yes, yes, sir. Hello? Hello? I wish to speak to Mrs. Sebastian, please. This is... Mrs. Sebastian. This is Dr. Downer. Dr. Downer? I'm an old doctor from Midbury, Mrs. Sebastian, not a crank. I wish I could have reached you sooner, but it's still not too late to warn you against possible tragedy. Possible tragedy? What are you talking about? I'm in Mr. Sawyer's office at the moment, and I've just found some very damaging evidence against Dr. Sebastian, whose real name is Dr. Frederick Langerman, wanted for murder in Vienna. But my husband couldn't possibly be this person you're talking about. How dare you make such insane accusations? These are not accusations, Mrs. Sebastian. They are facts, facts which I intend to give to the police. Please. Dr. Donner, I'm sure you're making a very serious mistake, but but before you do anything, will you please come to my house so that I can talk to you? I'm afraid I wouldn't care to see Dr. Sebastian until I've talked to the police. Doctor, I must talk to you. I'll come to you if you like. Or would you agree to meet me at the, at the 79th Street subway station? I'll go at once and wait there in a taxi. Well, all right, Mrs. Sebastian, for your sake. I'll meet you there in a few minutes. Where do I get the subway for 79th Street? In the uptown station, downstairs, across the street. Yes, now, there's one more thing you can do for me, and it's very urgent. Is there any way you can get in touch with Mr. Sawyer for me? Well, I'm not supposed to know where he is, but I do. Yes, well, then get him and tell him to meet me at the entrance of the 79th Street subway station just as soon as he can get there. Tell him it's about uh, uh, Savannah and Midbury. Get it? No, but you got me, so I'll get him. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
There's a dime. Hello? Tell Gil Sawyer that Mickey Barnes wants to talk to him. It's importantly urgent. Paper, paper, read all about it. Read about it, cemetery murder. Paper, paper, read all about it. Paper, mister. Oh, no, no, no. Where's the subway? Right over there. Paper, paper, read all about it. here to New York. I'm here on business. I'd like to visit with you. You shouldn't speak like that to an old friend. I have never been a friend of yours, Sebastian. Yes, I've often regretted that. Why the hurry? I have an engagement. Because I'm sure your business will wait just till my train comes along. Didn't you get off the last train? Yes, I saw you, and I couldn't let the occasion pass without speaking to you. Just wait here. I have nothing more to say to you, Sebastian. Something to say to the police, haven't you? What are you driving at? So here he is. Here's Dr. Frederick Langerman. He's been masquerading as Dr. Sebastian. He's wanted for murder in Vienna. I will. And you'll say he killed his wife in Midbury also, won't you? Yes. You'll say all that, Doctor. Yes. And I shan't leave out a similar murder in Savannah. Let me go! You'll say there are many others that I must kill, won't you, Doctor? Yes, and I'll swear it was Ida's voice I heard that night. Sorry, Doctor. Pardon me, that's his place. like you threw himself in front of a train, I think. Yeah, who is it? Follow well, name down from a little town upstate. George! George! Back up here. We need a lot of room here. Back up. What did you say his name was? Downer. Come on, folks. Let's have a lot of room here. Back up, lady, please. All right, folks. Let's keep this all clear. Be back, please. Maurice Kretz. I beg your pardon? But surely you are Maurice Kretz. I'm afraid you're mistaken. Oh, no, I'm not. You remember me. Serba. Serba. We met at Schultzmann Coffee House on the Opera Platz in Vienna. Opera Platz. Vienna. Oh, how can you forget that poker game we had? Poker game? With those lovely ladies. Ladies? Where you were. Uh, Lose your shirt and uh, everything. And you, you had three aces of hearts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I believe I do recall that. I'm awfully sorry, but you were much thinner then, and 
I think you didn't have the mustache. That's right. I only put this on since I got my new appointment. <laughs> what are you doing now, Thurber? <laughs> Same thing. Still in the police department. Chance of getting through that mob, Riley. Pretty good, Gil. Come ahead. Stand by, Joe. All right. Come on, Dick. What is it? Suicide? Yeah, an old man. You know who it is? Uh, Doctor Downer, I think. Downer? Yeah. Do you know him? I had an appointment with him. I didn't hear you come in. George. Well, what's the matter? You look pale. Where did you go this afternoon? Why, to my patient, as I told you. Well, what's troubling you? You're trembling. Come sit down. Tell me. I called you. Called to me. When you were coming out of the subway. Subway? 79th Street. What were you doing at 79th Street? I was waiting for someone. For whom? Dr. Downer. Dr. Downer? Here, dear, drink this. Oh, you're cold and shaking. What is it? Who was Dr. Downer, George? I haven't the faintest idea. Please tell me. But I don't know. You're lying, George. You knew Dr. Downer, and you know why I went there to meet him. No, I don't. Why? I wanted to keep him from going to the police about you. But when I saw you coming out of the subway, your face so white, getting into that cab, running away to hide, then I knew that... Linda, stop! It's true! You killed him. Why don't you deny it? You can't. He said you were dangerous and vicious. Linda! Linda, please try to understand. You and I are alike in a deep way. You've lived with death and I with darkness for a long time. So, that's what you meant that night in the roof when you told me about that patient who became a monster and killed? Linda! You're that man. You're that monster. Yes. But I crawled out of the depths to you. I thought a new light was in tomorrow. I thought I saw my dreams far away coming true. Linda, whatever I've done, whoever I've been, I love you. Where are you going? Out! Out! Where? Anywhere! No! No, I go! Go on, we... You've forgiven me, would have done you no good. 
But if you'd never known. Ah, that would have been sweet. That's better. I'd rather not see your eyes nor hear your voice. send our hearts into heaven, where no butterfingered old man can come stumbling after us. We'll be together, my angel, for all eternity. I'll hold you in my arms under a parasol of stars. We're going to Quito together, after all. So sad. 